When I first heard of Stray, I didn't really give it much thought. I assumed it would be another entry on the long list of simulator games, and besides I prefer dogs. Well, I couldn't have been more wrong. Stray is one of the most engaging games I've played in a long time, and considering not one word of actual dialogue is spoken, that's very impressive. A big part of what makes Stray so engaging is the game's world, with tons of things to see and do. That's why in today's video we'll be looking at 20 easter egg secrets and hidden details in Stray. Now whilst I will try my best to avoid spoilers, I cannot guarantee that this video will be spoiler free, so consider this a spoiler warning. As always if you think I've missed anything then please let me know in the comments, and without further delay, let's get started. Right, let's begin with something that you may not have noticed before you even start the game. At the main menu, if you wait long enough, this will happen. Ok, so it can't just be me that finds the cat's glowing eyes terrifying, right? To see the demon cat for yourself, you'll need to wait at the main menu for around 2 minutes, but I definitely wouldn't recommend trying this one at night. So I've said before that I always recommend pressing buttons over and over again or doing the opposite of what a game asks, just to see what happens. Well this next easter egg requires you to be one of those annoying people that loves to channel hop. After pressing the remote a few times, you'll land on this futuristic shopping channel. In the lower left hand corner of the screen you can find a QR code that, when scanned, gives you a message written in binary. If you translate the binary, it reads, hello you. Now if you've been following my detail hunting exploits for a while now, you'll be aware of my fascination with video game pool tables. So far the undisputed king of in-game pool tables is Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which not only lets you pot the balls, but also shows those same balls making their way through the table. Now that may seem like a small detail, and that's because it is, but it's a detail that I love. Anyway, let's see how Stray compares in the pool table department. So whilst not quite as impressive as the pool tables in Deus Ex, the balls do make their way into the table, which is still a really nice touch. Besides, how many other games can you play pool as a cat? Another really cool detail that can be found in the slums is a paper bag. Now whilst this everyday item may not wow you immediately, unless you're really into paper bags and if you are, I won't judge, but if the cat gets the bag stuck on its head, this will happen. So if the sight of a cat with a paper bag on its head wasn't funny enough, what makes this so cool is that controlling your cat will now be super difficult, as it can no longer see where it's going. That means pressing up could make the cat turn left, and pressing down could make it go right. It's actually a really clever detail. So despite humanity being extinct in Stray, a lot of the robots have taken on the habits of humans. That includes making friends, sleeping, working, and even eating. You see, robots don't have a digestive system, or any real need to eat, but that doesn't stop them craving ramen. Or should that be ramen? Don't worry, that will make sense in a minute. In a couple of different locations, you can find sticks of computer RAM in a bowl. So instead of ramen noodle soup, you get ramen soup. Do you get it? Because they're sticks of RAM? Yeah, you get it. Now, one of the locations that you need to explore in Stray is a library-like room found on the rooftops. Among the many books in the room is this one, which is actually one of the journals from animated TV show Gravity Falls. Another thing that I noticed when exploring the slums are the cameras. If you approach one of these nosy gadgets and meow, this will happen. so the camera will nod in agreement to the meows. Quite what's being said here is anyone's guess. 
Right, let's leave the slums behind now and meet up with Doc. This eccentric scientist bears an uncanny resemblance to another famous fictional scientist, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Anyway, Doc later goes on to state that he needs 1.21 gigawatts of power to charge the Defluxer, a machine that is capable of killing the creepy Zerks. More on them later. Of course, if this wasn't already obvious enough, the character of Doc is a reference to Dr. Emmett Brown from the Back to the Future movies. Regular viewers of this channel will be all too aware that 1.21 gigawatts is the required charge to power the time-traveling DeLorean in those same movies. But I need a nuclear reaction to, to generate the 1.21 gigawatts of electricity. 1.21 gigawatts! Oh, and whilst not quite as on the nose as Doc, Doc's son Seamus is a reference to Marty McFly who can be seen wearing a similar red body warmer in the films. Now, this next easter egg could be seen as a little vague, so I'm interested to know what you think. In the subway, you can find this. So I, and many others, believe that this crowbar is a reference to Half-Life. The crowbar has become synonymous with series protagonist Gordon Freeman, and in both of the mainline Half-Life games, Gordon begins on a train. Couple that with the fact that the Zerks look an awful lot like the headcrabs from Half-Life, it's going to take a lot to convince me that this isn't a reference. But as always, let me know what you think. The next video game to be referenced by Stray isn't anywhere near as debatable. At a bar in Midtown, you can find a lone man sitting on a stool. If you approach him, he will say this. So believe it or not, there are actually two video games being referenced here. First, and most obviously, is the man's story of owning a bar before he took a screwdriver in the knee. This is a reference to this often memed line of dialogue from Skyrim. I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Oh, and just to clarify, a lot of people point to the line's Nordic roots, as if that's what games are referencing. It was used in those times as a way of saying that you're now married. However, Skyrim is definitely what made the phrase relevant in pop culture today. Oh, and the other game being referenced here is Persona 5. The name of the unlucky robot is Sejiro, as in Sejiro Sakura, a character from Persona 5 who owned a cafe. There is another Skyrim reference that can be found in the Ant Hill chapter. Here you can find two robots digging through junk. If you approach them, one of the robots will say this. So that is a reference to a line said by shopkeepers in the legendary Bethesda RPG. Some may call this junk, me, I call them treasure. So, towards the end of the game, the cat finds itself in prison. Of course, four walls can't hold the plucky little guy and it's not long before the four-legged furball is planning its escape. However, if you take the time to talk to some of your fellow inmates, some of their names may ring a bell. For example, you can find a prisoner called Capone, who is a reference to infamous crime boss Al Capone. Another prisoner goes by the name of Pablo, which could be a reference to Colombian drug lord Pablo Escobar. Lupin is the French fictional master thief who now has a Netflix show. And finally, this person, no, I won't even attempt to pronounce the name, is actually a developer who worked on Stray. The final Easter egg I've managed to find in Stray is actually back in the slums. If you take Music Sheet 6 to Marusk, he will begin to play this. <laughs> So that song is actually Counting Stars by Japanese music producer Nujibes, who passed away in 2010. I'm going to end the video here. If you enjoyed it, then a like is appreciated. If I've missed anything, then please let me know. Thank you all for watching and enjoy the music.